Hey, my lovelies, it's me, author Alexandrian Fonte, coming to you with a new review. So, I missed you guys. Um, yeah, we were gone for a couple of days, but uh, hopefully it gets, hopefully we get more authors. Um, Jen and I were doing some more Facebook posts today, so hopefully readers out there, we will have more awesome indie authors to bring to you. So now tonight, if you guys recall, Jen sends me freebies that she gets or books that she buys off of um, Amazon sometimes. Um, we You can usually tell an indie author because it'll say sold by Amazon uh, Associates or something like that. I can't remember what it says exactly, but that's usually how you can tell it's an indie author. Um so, um, we didn't have an actual, I mean, we have some romances, but I'm trying to save those, um, because the fact that, uh, the authors have, we've already did one, um, we did a review from them already. So I'm trying to see, um, if maybe this week we'll get some new ones. And if not, then we're going to go ahead and start with those authors next week. Um, so this is why I said the other day we were going to do, uh, Indy Jones, but we've actually pushed her back to next week, um, to see if we would get any more actual, um, romances this week. And if not, then we will start with our authors that we've already reviewed. Um, so, uh, as well as authors that Jen finds on, um, on uh amazon that are also indie authors so we will get you guys some authors somehow <laughs> um and so tonight's author is going to she is an indie author as well and she uh jen found her book on amazon.com and um the book is called scorned and it says beware the vampire scorn and so um, a LaCrista Scott vampire hunted novel by Tiffany Clark Kemp. Okay, and here is the cover. Okay, so this book follows um, follows Lucretia, LaCrista, I mean, I'm sorry, LaCrista Scott. And so she basically has... Um, she is your normal, everyday, average... Uh, you know, girl, she works for a flower shop and, um, she works with these two other, um, two other like really pretty fashionista type girls. And then her boss is like kind of a douche. Um, and so, um, she describes herself as not being like, not ugly. She's biracial. Um, she's not ugly, but then she's not like a beauty queen either. That's pretty much how she describes herself. And then she, um, so she, uh, she considers herself to be thick. And so, um, so basically you're just following her and her everyday life. Um, her boyfriend, uh, oh my goodness, I forgot his name. I think it's, um, I think it's Phil. Darn it. I didn't have my notes today, guys. I'm so sorry. I actually had to work. Um, and so you're pretty much following her and, oh, Pierce, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So you're following her and Pierce and their everyday life. And so she works for this, like I said, she works for a flower shop. And then one night she decides to uh, stop off at the, uh, the bodega, liquor store, whatever you want to call it, and get like beer. And so um, as she's coming out of the convenience store, she, uh, the cartons on the, the, the beer bottles, the beer, um, the bottoms fall out. And so she's like spilling, she's like freaking out because her beer's spilling all over the ground. And then like she turns to like miss the shards of glass and thinking like the glass is going to hit the ground, but it never does. And so when she turns back, um, there's a guy standing there and then he start, you know, he has a, he has a conversation with her. He doesn't really say anything. Um, she introduces herself and then like reluctantly he introduces himself and then he kisses her hand and he says that he'll see her again. And so, um, so basically she goes home and 
and she's talking with her boyfriend and then she falls asleep and then she has this really weird vivid dream and it feels like someone actually bit her in this dream and she's dreaming of vampires and then um and then so after that it's like she uh she the book goes on and it's you know dealing with the the, the boyfriend pierce and then his brother and then the younger uh niece who's actually 16 and she's pregnant and all of this takes place in south carolina and so she um so after that you know she starts having these dreams and these terrible dreams of like this vampire like biting people and and uh basically having a conversation with her but she doesn't know him and so then she meets the guy again who thought she met at the store and then she realizes that he's a vampire and so um basically the rest of the book is her attempting not to be a part of his harem because he has a harem he takes her to his house and then she meets the other women that he's with and then you find out that these dreams and images that she keeps getting um, she's linked to this vampire and he's the one that's actually doing all the damage and he is the guy who she met his name is Roman so he is Roman's uh, protege I guess you'd say or sired um, because Roman is his sire and so okay so now I had I had some serious issues with this book I feel like of the story itself could have been really really good but it's confusing as i literally had to take the book off of the kindle speak because i wasn't i was like i i i couldn't i couldn't follow i like literally could not follow um okay so i understand uh, like a lot of characters will you you know as authors we will give them a nickname but it's like the nickname I, ca I just kind of feel like the nickname has to transition not speaking of myself whenever I'm talking about reviews I'm not talking about my books I'm talking about like other people's books <laughs> um, because I'm not I'm not claiming to be uh, Dan Brown either I do the best that I can I like to write the way that I write so I'm never coming to you as an author I'm coming to you as a reader um, like for an example, um, I'll use other authors, not my work. I'll try not to use my work. Um, I'm not sure if I've done that yet. If I have someone check me down at the bottom because I don't like to do that, but, um, like I'll use other authors. So right now I'm going to use Ari Lee. Okay. Ari Lee has this book where, um, um, it's called, uh, like a lollipop. Yeah, it's. It's exactly what you're thinking um, but the whole point is is the character um, her name her name is Maria Fernanda but in the book Sieben the character Sieben the male the main male he calls her stacks because of the way that her body is made up so from the beginning of the book the book opens with a phone call he calls downstairs to say hey what are you doing she says, I just got in. He says, five minutes. She goes, awesome. Well, it's obvious they're going to have like a little tete-a-tete. -tete. Well, when she's doing what she's doing, he, he basically yells stacks. And that is how the character is. Re That's her name through the majority of the book. Now, when she goes to work, you know her as Maria Fernanda. But the whole point is, is that Ara Lee began the book with calling this character Stax. Okay, so now in this book, Scorn, the character's name is Locrista. But the main, the main male character at the time, at the beginning of the book, he, Pierce, her boyfriend, he calls her Stacy. Okay, those two names, like... I'm not, I, I wasn't getting how he went from, how he went from, I didn't read that part. I looked for that part in the book to see if the author told you why he called her Stacy. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I didn't hear it because I even went back and like, you know, reverted the pages so I could hear or see where 
the nickname Stacy came up. So it for like so the first entire half of the book, I'm reading it and I'm like, who the fuck is Stacy? Because basically, I thought this character's name was Lucrista. So that was very, very, very confusing. And then the author doesn't use. She doesn't use ellipses. So you never know when the point of view or the scene changes. So like she has italicized um italicized sections in the book and it was finally after like a minute I realized that the italicized uh indentation is the switch of point of view. So that was very very confusing. Um there were no typos. I didn't see any typos. Um, I really, really feel like this could be an amazing book. Because I'm going to star this book. I'm going to give her a three stars because of the fact that the, 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 the work itself that she put into this book was really good. The characters, the premise of the book, the two vampires, the sire... And, you know, the Siree, I'm not exactly sure what it's called. Because called in my series, I, I will refer to my series right now. I call the, the Sires, they're called the Progenitors, basically. They began the race. And then you could say Vamp Daddy, his whatever, you know, I, I like Sethroff, my character Sethroff. Six calls him his Vamp Daddy. Um... Or actually, Six does it. Joby does. She does it as a joke. And she's like, yeah, that's your vamp daddy. Um, but I don't know exactly. I can't remember what you would actually call the creator. So maybe creator if that works for you or whatever. But um, the parameters, the dynamics between the creator and his sire. I mean, and his the, the, the sire and his vampire could have been really, really good. If there was not so much confusion in this book, I literally could not figure out what was going on half of the time. And I had to go back and reread um, re excerpts of the book. And so that was very hard for me. And it's like, and I don't want to start this book low or not, or don't give it any stars because of the fact that the story, the premise is good. And, you know, I would have been like completely, completely entertained with this book because of the premise of the story. And the story is actually good. I was just confused. You know, it's like one minute I'm in this part of the book and then the next minute someone else. And it's like, it's like you're in a tennis match. You know, when the story is really good and it could, if she maybe learned more techniques in like transitioning a story um and even if she she didn't use ellipses transition words and this is coming from the teacher okay not the author not the reader this is the teacher transition words will also allow a reader to know when there is a break in the story so there were no transition words like however uh you know Albeit, uh, in as much as, you know, notwithstanding, nonetheless, there were no transition words that would help the reader transition to some, to a different point of view. So, this is a good story. I, what I would say is that the reader go back and include the, I mean the author, I'm sorry, not reader, that the author would go back and include these into the book ellipses, transition words, and um, breaks, complete breaks, you know, um, headings, because there were no headings in the book, like, you know, um, the interaction between Luc uh, Lucretius and Roman, Roman is the sire, Lucretius is the, the, the vamp baby, so basically, when they first interacted, and when they began, that needs a prologue or that needs a flashback or even if she even said the word flashback or prologue put one of those in there because your reader is very 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 confused because I was confused as hell 
but like I said, it's a good story. So I'm going to star this book a three stars. She could have gotten a four or five because of, I love origin stories and back histories like that. So if you have an origin story, hit me with that baby. Um, I love stories like that because me, myself, I'm going to refer to my books, but not in that way, but I write origin. Every freaking character that I have, I write origin. Maybe that's because I'm like a, a, a Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, um, I'm a f superhero freak. It's like, you know, my uncle was a, he was one of the artists for Mattel and, um, when you had like the little action figures and then he was one of the main artists for marvel back in the day so when the when comics came like fresh off the press my uncle would bring like a stack of them to me and my brothers and so i've always been a serious comic book freak graphic novels all of that and so basically if it's an origin story i'm loving it already because it's origin so i feel like this author could the origin story is there and she could have really worked with it and so this is why i don't want to star her book under anything than three or give her a no stars because it's not her story that's the problem her story is good the problem is is that she's not using breakage where the reader knows okay now i'm in another point of view or okay now i'm i'm back Two centuries ago so she doesn't have any headers or any breaks or any anything to to you know prepare the reader that okay boom I just switched to fit not saying this is for her book but this is just an example saying you know why wow, I just switched to fifth century uh, you know uh, Egyptians or the fifth dynasty in in Egypt and or I'm in the Greek you know uh, I'm in Athens or something like that basically there's nothing there to let you know that you you're in a whole nother different area now so if anything I could say about this author I would say that she go back and she put the she put those into the book for the reader because I was very confused I mean I like the story I think like I said I think it's a good story I give it a solid three stars for the story because the story was really good I just feel like She's going to lose readers if she doesn't go back and fix that. And, you know, some readers, unfortunately, are not gracious at all. And so, because I had to actually go back and fix one of my books. Because, and it was just uh, three lines that the reader did not get. And so, she marked me a two-star. She gave me a two-star review, and she actually literally wrote the passage that she saw the issue with, and she marked the book two stars. And so, I had to go back and fix that. And it was, a, it was probably a good, maybe a paragraph out of a 200-page book. So, readers are not gracious at all. And this is one reason why we're doing this channel too. So we can help indie authors out as well. The teacher and me. So that's pretty much it. Once again, the book was called Scorned. Just a second. It's called Scorned. And it's a La Crista Scott vampire hunted novel and it's by tiffany clark kemp beware the vampire squad and here is the cover so like i said this was a good read it was a good it, the story itself was very good i just feel like she needs to go and fix those things um so the reader's not like confused because i was very very confused and that's pretty much it and now tomorrow, we will be reading We're actually going to read One second Okay 
Now, this author is not on our list either. Um, like I said, Jen will send me delicious works. Um, this book is called About That Night. And it's a contemporary billionaire collection. Uh, Scribble XO Books. And it's by... Wait, I don't see an author. Okay, wait. I'm going to have to go to Kindle. I mean, to the... Wow, I literally don't see unless that's the author of this this series. Because I'm not seeing a... Yeah, I don't see an actual author's name here. Okay, if so, someone out there, if you know, because it just says Scribble XO Books. So, is it by like a... Yeah, and it's not... Yeah, whoops, I mean, excuse me? <laughs> uh, yeah, the rest of the, the rest of the books in this series, they actually, they have an author on them, but... Yeah, so where I, I'm not understanding why I will figure it out by the time, but before tomorrow to find out, so we we know who this author is. But this is the cover, and it's a it's called About That Night, and it's a contemporary billionaire collection. Now, billionaire romances are like my guilty pleasure because. Oh my gosh, what was it? Year 2017, I think. 2017, I think there was a flood, like a serious flood of billionaire romances out there. It was like every time you turned around, there were some billionaire romances. Our lead does like three. She does three or four, I think it is. And she does two that are older women, younger men, which I really love. They were delicious. And then... Um, I tried my hand too. I did. I did one. Yeah. No, no, no. I did two. Two. I think. Because it's not really my cuppa. But I just wanted to see if I could do it. If I could write it. Um, I am pr primarily a paranormal author. And sometimes I switch over into uh, historical and contemporary just for fun. Because um, I have 40... I have 44 titles under paranormal and then um, I mean it's still 18 contemporaries and 11 historicals but I'm primarily a paranormal romance author but anyway so make sure you check out that book because like I said it's a very good story I just didn't like the way that it had me confused um, once again it's called let me show you one more time before we go. It's called Scorn, a LaCrista Scott vampire hunted novel. You guys make sure you go out there and pick it up and read it for yourself. Remember, any review that I do on this channel, they are the opinions of Poison Pen reviewers. They are not yours. So make sure you go out and get these novels and books anyway because you might find them extremely delicious i mean i found that book very good i was just confused in places and i feel like doing what i suggested would help the author because then it would just knock out all the confusion but um it remember it was a good story it's just i was confused so anyway and that's pretty much it and then tomorrow we will be reading about that night and i will figure out who the author is before tomorrow <laughs> and that's pretty much it and we will see you guys tomorrow